But we are here to worship God and we are here to hear what the Lord has to say. And I'm going to call our brother Adrian Francis just to pray for us before the ministry of the word. Blessed be his holy name. Let us stand in God's holy divine presence. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. We reverence his presence. Praise the Lord. Let's praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. All I can say, Sister M, they leave a legacy behind here. And it's a big legacy. Praise God for that. Let us all pray together. <clears throat> Most righteous and everlasting Father. Oh God, as I come this morning, we come to lift up your holy and precious name. We thank you for this morning, oh God. We thank you for Calvary. Oh God, you said, oh Father, at the cross, at the cross, where we first saw the light and the burden of our heart rolls away. And it was day by faith we first received our sight, oh God. But Heavenly Father, this moment, we look down on us this moment, oh God. My God, remember our pastor this moment, oh God. Oh God, you know, you, oh Father, you send your son to die on the cross for each and every one of us, oh Father, we pray. But Heavenly Father, we thank you this moment, oh God, for everything, oh God, for giving us health and strength. Oh God, we told you, oh Father, we are nothing, but in your sight, oh God, we are something, oh God, we pray. My God, remember the pastor this moment, oh God, I pray for him this moment, oh God. Oh God, I pray, Heavenly Father, and let your Holy Spirit, oh God, let your holy angels, oh God, oh God, guide him this moment, oh God, and everything he may say, oh God, let, don't let it come from just his mouth. Oh God, that is come from deep down, deep down inside of oh God of in this moment we pray. For. Father, we look to you and we tell you thanks more abundantly, oh Father. Oh God, let your Holy Spirit move from bench to bench this moment, oh God. Oh God, help us to connect to each other, oh God. My God and oh God, eventually, Father, this moment have never a time. We need thee, O oh Father, we need thee now. Guide and protect us now and have your own sweet way while we will receive your blessing in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You may be seated in the wonderful name of Jesus. Open your Bibles with me to the scripture that was so beautifully read. Matthew chapter 18. I want to speak a little bit today about forgiveness. It's a topic that challenges all of us. When someone mashes your blue suede shoe, you're ready to fight. I want to speak a little bit about forgiveness today. You may say, how can God forgive me? You do not know what I have done. You might say, how could I have done such an awful thing? I can never forgive myself. You may say, forgive him or forgive her. You do not know what she has done to me. Many of us would come up with those challenges. How do we forgive in such a time as this? We live in a sad and broken world where we find it very hard to forgive one another. Forgiveness is always hard, difficult and not knowing where to start. But remember, God is love. And God is ready to forgive you of all your sins. Forgiveness brings healing, happiness, togetherness, and much more. True forgiveness comes from the heart, and God knows when your heart is true. Because you can say, I forgive you, and your heart is saying, no, you are lying. God alone knows your heart when we say, I have forgiven you. The bottom line of forgiveness is the fact that God first forgave us 
And he taught us how to forgive one another. Forgiveness is the art of setting someone free from an obligation resulting from a wrong they have done unto us. Forgiveness unlocks the blessings of God, but unforgiveness keeps us in bondage. Forgiveness helps you to walk in freedom, but unforgiveness keeps the devil constantly on your case. Forgiveness is a powerful force to change lives. It is inseparably connected with love. When someone hurts you, you can hold on to anger, resentment, or even thoughts of revenge, or embrace forgiveness and move forward. We need to be healed from the cancer of bitterness and resentment because we have lost the art and the heart of forgiving one another. God wants you to be completely free from guilt, condemnation, resentment, bitterness, and much more. God wants you to be completely free from all of those things. Resentment is a state of mind or emotion felt when we are offended by someone or being treated unfairly. We develop a resentment for people who have done us wrong. And many of us have been holding bitterness and resentment for years. But today is your day of freedom. Today, God wants to release you from that burden of heaviness that you have been carrying for many years. He wants to set you free, that you leave this place a free person from all bitterness and resentment. Resentment or unforgiveness, it starts off small, but as long as you keep it, it grows bigger and bigger until it chokes you and you cannot manage. Every time you see that person or persons who hurt you, there is something swelling up inside of you. If you're in the same room with them, you feel very uncomfortable because unforgiveness and bitterness is in your heart. Every time you see them, you walk on the other side of the road because you don't want to pass them because you have bitterness and forgiveness in your heart. Today is your day of freedom. Free at last, free at last. Today is your day of freedom. Forgiveness is freeing up and putting to better use the energy once consumed by holding grudges, harboring resentment, and nursing unhealed wounds. Use your energy better. Instead of keeping hurts and bitterness, use your energy for something good in this world in which we are living. We can receive forgiveness and grant forgiveness all because of God's nature. Psalm 86, 5 tells us, For thou, Lord, art good and ready to forgive and plenteous in mercy unto all them that call upon thee. God's grace and forgiveness. If you remember in the scripture, there was a prodigal son. He took all his goods and he went away. And when all his money finished, he started eating with the pigs. He smelt like a pig. He looked like a pig almost. But he remembered his father's house. There is food in my father's house. And he repented in his heart and he came back home. And his father was there to receive him. It doesn't matter how low you have fall, God is ready to receive you back into his family. It doesn't matter how low you have reached in life. God's arms are outstretched towards you, and he's ready to forgive you. You might say, you don't know what I have done. I don't need to know what you have done. I know God can forgive you. One songwriter said, a vilest offender who truly believes a pardon from Jesus Christ, he will receive. When Jesus died on Calvary, he forgave us from the penalty of sin, he forgave us 
of all our sins. He made several statements on the cross of Calvary, but one remarkable statement when they were killing him, he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. He is still asking forgiveness for you and I. When we come in repentance, he will forgive you of every sin that you have committed. The message of forgiveness is not freedom to sin again. When God sets you free, it's not for you to go and sin again. When he set you free, he wants you to remain free all the days of your life. He who the Son set free is free indeed. We must develop and maintain the capacity to forgive. He who is devoid of the power to forgive is devoid of the power of love. If you have love in you at all, you will find it very hard to forgive someone who have hurt you. If you have love in you, you will not find it very hard to forgive someone who has hurt you. And that love is not your love. It's the love of God inside of you. Amen. Forgiveness is the very essence of Christianity. If you think about it, there is some good in the worst of us and some evil in the best of us. But forgiveness is very important. We need forgiveness in our everyday lives, in marriages, in family life. We need it at home. It's a must for anyone who is a mom, a dad, a daughter, or a son to learn to forgive one another. Forgiveness is so important for the preservation and growth of family life. We need forgiveness at work, on the streets, at school, colleges, and everywhere. God knows everything about us. He knows where you were last night. You don't have to answer that one. If you think about it, I don't know when you were coming here. If someone cut you up in their driving, did someone cut you up and you're ready to do the business? But we can forgive them. Sometimes when I'm driving and people hooting you on, on the motorway to get on with it, I just say, pass along, brother. Go along your way, otherwise the blue lights will be flashing behind you. How can God forgive me? You do not know what I have done. Why does your attitude change when someone who offended you comes near to you? Why does your attitude change? That means you have not forgiven them. That means you have not forgiven them. When they come close to you, you are smiling one, but as soon as they come, you get serious all of a sudden because in your heart, you have not forgiven them. You are still holding a grudge or a malice or a hatred, but today you can be set free from all of that. You can leave this place a free person without any hatred or bitterness or unforgiveness towards anyone in this life, even in the playground at school. You can have hatred in your heart against your fellow students, against your fellow teacher, because you might say, you do not know what they have done to me. Yes, they may have done things to you, but you can still forgive them. There was a, a story in the Bible of a young man named Joseph. He grew up in his family. He had dreams and visions of great things, but his own blood family hated him. They sold him to the Egyptians. They sold him to the Ishmaelites. He went down into Egypt. He became a member of Potiphar's house. His wife accused him of rape. He was in prison for a long, long time. But when he had an encounter with his brothers, he forgave them of everything that they did to them. As I said earlier, forgiveness is hard, but with God in you, you can forgive because it's not so much you forgiving them, it's the Christ in you that is forgiving the people. God's grace and forgiveness is demonstrated when he died on the place called Calvary. He learned how to forgive. 
learning to forgive ourselves. How could I have done such an awful thing? You would hear many people say, I cannot forgive myself. You can. Many times you don't know how to forgive yourself because you do not understand the love of God. When you understand that God loves you and he has forgiven you of so much. If you think of the story that was read this morning, one guy owed 10,000 10, talents and he wasn't able to pay. The Lord said, take every goods of his, his wife, his family, and put them in jail until he was able to pay. If you're in jail, you can't work. How could you? How would you be able to pay the bill? But God forgave him everything and set him free. All of our sins, and you cannot number them because from the time you were born, you were sinning. But look at what God has done. All your sins, past sins, present sins, future sins, they were all nailed to the cross of Calvary, and God can forgive you. If you would only come to him and ask him, Lord, I am sorry for all that I have done, he is able to forgive you. But you must learn, when he has forgiven you, learn to forgive yourself. Don't still carry that burden. When he has forgiven you, don't carry that burden. Once he has forgiven you, you are free. You are free. You are free in your mind. Sometimes it's your mind that controls you. When God has forgiven you, you're still keeping it in your mind. And your mind is playing games on you. Just accept God's forgiveness and move on in life. Letting go of guilt from yesterday's problem is a necessary step in experience of forgiveness. When God has forgiven us, we need to accept it for ourselves and move on in life. Many would say, if only I had done this or that or the other. We blame ourselves even when it's not our fault. Realize that God loves you. You are forgiven when you confess to God. Forgiving ourselves is such a vital contribution to our spiritual, emotional, and physical being. When you forgive yourselves, you show God to be the healer of the brokenness that is hidden deep within our lives. And, and sometimes we may have a smile on the outside, but deep down in our hearts we are broken. Because we are carrying unforgiveness in our heart. We walk around with a smile. And someone would say, how are you? And you would say, I am fine. But deep down inside, you are carrying that weight of unforgiveness and bitterness and hatred for your brother. Even for your family member. You are carrying that, that weight of bitterness inside of you. But today, God wants to set you free. You don't have to carry that weight of bitterness any longer. And sometimes we feel ashamed of that bitterness and hatred we are carrying towards even our blood families. Can you imagine you're in a house and you're passing your, your blood brother and sister in the house and you can't even say hi because you have a hatred for your brother, your blood brother or your blood sister. A hatred is inside of you. But today, God wants to set you free. God wants to set you free from that burden. So when you see your blood sister or your, your blood brother, you can hug them and say, I love you. And it comes from deep within your heart. This world is troubled, even in homes. There is bitterness and hatred. The husband cannot speak to the wife. The wife cannot speak to the husband. The children cannot speak to dad because everybody is hating one another. Why not turn the hate into love today? Love one another with the love of Almighty God. Feelings of shame accompany sin. When you cannot forgive yourself, hatred comes in and you even hate 
yourself. Do you know so many people are doing self-harm because they hate themselves? I want to tell you today that God loves you. You don't have to hate yourself anymore. God is the one who created you in his image and in his likeness. And he sent you into this world as, as he, he sent our beloved, dedicated baby. God sent him into this world. Can you see the beauty of God? All of us have different faces. Where does he get all these beautiful... You look beautiful, don't you? Where does he get all these beautiful faces to send into this world? God wants you to be free from unforgiveness and bitterness and hatred. The Bible says in Romans 8, verse 1, There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Wake up, people of God, and realize you are forgiven. God is your source of forgiveness. Why should I continue to condemn myself when God has forgiven me? Does my self-condemnation draw me into intimate relationship with God? Is my unwillingness to forgive myself helping my relationship with others? Is there any spiritual basis for my continual refusal to forgive myself? On the basis of God's forgiveness, I release myself from the guilt and the feelings of unworthiness, and I claim the joy and peace that are mine in the name of Jesus. Psalm 32 verse 5 says this, I know I am forgiven. It's a personal thing. I know that I am forgiven. You point at yourself. You know when you are forgiven. And when you are forgiven, there is a sense of peace on the inside. There is a sense of joy when you receive the forgiveness of God. You have been trying to buy peace. You have been trying to buy forgiveness. You have been trying to make your own peace and your own forgiveness. But it does not work. It's only the peace of God that passes all understanding can give you true peace. I mean true peace. You can be in the midst of war and you have peace within because Christ lives on the inside of you. Christ lives on, and when he lives on the inside of you, you have true peace. You have true joy. You have true forgiveness. Today is the day of salvation. Today is your day of freedom. There's a story about a birds in a cage. They were in the cage for so long. And the door was open. And they refused to fly out because they were in that one position for a long time. God has opened the door of freedom for you. Why not walk through that door of freedom? Walk through that door of freedom. Free at last. Free at last. Free at last. No more chains to hold you back. Philippians 3.13. The Apostle Paul, who was once a persecutor of Christians, everywhere he saw Christians, he would torment them. But one day Jesus met him on the road to Damascus and he transformed his life from being a persecutor of Christians. He became a breather of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Let me just say this. You didn't come here today by accident. It was God ordained. You didn't just come to Jariah's baby dedication. You came to have an encounter with God because God knows you need to be set free. He knows you need to be set free. I tell you, when you accept the freedom of Jesus, when you go to work on Monday, the people will see you different. They will see your countenance. 
They will wonder what has happened to you. And your answer is, I have had an encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ. If you don't believe me, try it. You will be a different person at work where you once used to grumble and murmur at the boss. You have the peace of God that passes it. All understanding. Instead of complaining and moaning, you will be praising God in your corner because God has been good to you. And this is the crucial bit. Learning to forgive others when they hurt you. You might say, forgiving him or her. Are you joking? Are you real? Get real. After what he or she has done to me. Do you know many times it's pride stops us from saying, I am sorry. How long did it take me to say, I am sorry? A couple of seconds. And many people find it hard to say, I am sorry. I am sorry. Just those few words go a very long way. I am sorry. Forgive me. You can say, I'm sorry, but it's, if it's not from your heart, it's futile. Lack of forgiveness of others revokes the forgiveness of God to us. You know, sometimes we love other people to forgive us of the wrongs that we have done, but turn it around. We forgive in them of the things that they have wronged us. It is so easy that the other person who have wronged you, they should apologize. It's they who have done me wrong. And we cause a big argument. But instead of arguing, you might be 100% right, but just say, I am sorry, and it healed the wounds. It brings togetherness. It brings unity. You may not be wrong, but just saying, I am sorry, it brings friendship again. It brings unity again. Amen. Young people, remember those days when we used to open the door and go to the parties? And when you come back in the night, you're sneaking, you, you hope mom and dad don't hear the key. But as soon as you open the door, you see mom and dad right behind the door. And what do you say? Dad, I'm sorry. But if you run in and you think you have big stuff, hey, the belt, oh, no, the belt, that's abuse. <laughs> Forgive, I am sorry. It is important to remember that forgiveness is an act of the will. Forgiveness is genuine when we do not feel the way we once felt towards those who offended us. It's up to us to let go of the pressure and weight of an unforgiving attitude. Remember the other person does not have to apologize or change for you to find forgiveness. Matthew 18, 20, Matthew 18 21. Peter asks the Lord, how often shall I forgive my brother when he sins against me? Let me say in this world, you will have offenses. You will have offenses. People will step on your blue suede shoe. No, no, we don't wear suede shoe anymore. People will step on your bunion. Do you, we don't have bunions anymore. Am I right or wrong? You young people don't know what bunions are. But when they step on you, instead of ready to do fisticuffs, you know what fisticuffs is? You know, somebody step on you, mm, you'll give them. Why not ask forgiveness? And go in God's direction. I tell you, when, when we do it God's way, it makes such a difference. When we do it God's way, it makes such a difference. When we do it God's way, let me get on because of time. Roots of bitterness. Let me say this. If the root is bitter, the fruits will be bitter. So if you have bitterness in your heart, all you will be bringing out is bitterness because the root is bitter. The substance in the tree comes from the root. And if your root is bitter, all you will be spewing out is bitterness and hatred. Why not get your root transformed today? Let Jesus 
plant his love and his forgiveness in your root today. He is waiting. He's waiting. He's waiting. Let, let me show you some of the devastating effects of an unforgiving heart. Your prayers will not be answered. Depression comes in. You become a slave to resentment. You become a slave to bitterness when you don't forgive. Ungodliness will increase. And you would not even be able to worship. Because when you come and worship, God will say, you have something in your heart against your brother or sister. Go and make it up with your brother and sister before you come and worship me. We need clean hands and pure heart to worship the God of heaven. And let me just remind you again that God loves you. And you know, many people grow up, they never even heard mom and dad say, I love you as a little child. Many people grow up, they never heard the word, I love you. But I'm telling you today, God loves you. And he doesn't just love you, he loves you with an everlasting love. So no one can stop him from loving you. No one can change his mind. You know, if it's us, we have favorites. Lord, don't love that section over there. They're the bad guys. These are the prize guys on this side. God loves everybody. He does not discriminate. He loves everybody with an everlasting love. I remember a story I was hearing. I'm closing the book. A man's brother was killed. And he was hunting down the killer with a shotgun in his car. And the man who killed his brother went to a crusade and he got saved. Unknowingly to this man with the shotgun, he came with the intent to kill the man who killed his brother. But while he came near to the crusade, and he heard the singing, and he heard the worshiping going on. He left his shotgun in the car. And when he came to the crusade, he saw the same man that killed his brother. Rage flied up into him. He wanted to go back to his car to get his shotgun. But God met him on the way. And changed his heart of bitterness because he had revenge. But I tell you, when God meets you, he turned all the revenge into love. And the story went on. The man who came with a shotgun, he was saved. That, that's a church language. That's a church song. Let me explain what it means by he is saved. He came in the line when they were praying for those who want to receive Jesus in their heart. He received Jesus in his heart. And the same man who he came to kill, they hugged each other and forgave each other. That is a true story. So you, you may have revenge. Someone may have done your real terrible thing. Ask God to forgive you. Ask God to take revenge out of your heart. Ask him to remove revenge and put love doesn't the Bible say, love your neighbor? Let me put you in the spot. How many of you invited your neighbor for chocolate, tea, and biscuits? Don't put your hands up. You might embarrass your neighbor. How many of us know the name of our neighbors? We have lived here 40, 50 years. But we don't know the name of our neighbor. Is that love? Today... I have closed the book. I believe I've said enough. But let me just say what I have to say. Today, I want to tell you there are three reasons why you need Jesus. Three reasons. There are much more, but I'm just telling you three why you need Jesus. Jesus loves you. He desires to have a relationship with you 
and to give you a life full of joy and purpose. You need him in your life because you have a past. All of us have a past. We cannot change the past. We cannot change the past. What is done is done. We may have been terrible people, but it's in the past. You cannot go back there. But what I'm telling you, Jesus can go back there and forgive you of all your sins, past, present sins, and even the things you're going to do in the future. He nailed them all to that place called Calvary. Another reason you need a friend. You need a friend. You need a friend. Let, let, let me tell you why you need a friend. All of us have little secrets. We have some skeleton in the covers, don't we? We hope no one else finds out. We hope no one else finds out about our secrets. But let me say, if you tell it to Jesus, he will never divulge your secrets. You could tell him everything and anything. He will not divulge your secret. That's why you need a friend. He knows the worst about you. And he knows the best about you. In other words, he knows everything. There is a psalm that says, even before you were formed in your mother's womb, even before your mother felt that kick in, well, he wasn't a footballer. Is he a footballer? She didn't feel any kicking. Even before the, the bones were formed in the mother's womb, God knows. God knows what name he would be called even before it came into the thought. It shows God knows everything about you. He knows everything about you. The door of salvation is open. That's a big churchy word. Let me use a small word. God wants to know you personally. He wants to know you personally. Don't you think he knows you? He knows your name. He knows where you live. He knows where you work. He knows what's going to happen to you tomorrow. And none of us knows what's going to happen tomorrow. So why not build a relationship with him? He knows the worst about you, yet he believes in you. God believes in you. His plans towards you are good and not evil. God wants the best for you. You would hear many times when we were growing up, people would say, you will come out to nothing. Have you ever heard that? What does this book say about you? His plans towards you are good and not evil. God wants you to come to a good end. A good end. He wants you to come to a good end. You see what's happening around with all these fires and all these flu. People are panicking. Don't tell me no. People are panicking, but there is a God. There is a God. There is a God. There is a God who loves you. And let me give you the third reason why I believe you need Jesus. He holds your future. He holds your future. He holds your future. You do not know what's going to happen within the next hour or so. You assume, you hope, you predict. He has the final word. He has the final word in your life. So today, I'm asking you, if you do not know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, today is the day of salvation. You might say, well, give me a chance, preacher, tomorrow. You are not sure about tomorrow. You're not sure if you will rise from that bed. You may lay down on that bed or wherever you lay down. I don't know. And you may never rise again. But when you put your faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, he holds your future. You won't have to be afraid of a Monday morning to face that boss anymore. Because when you go to work, when you receive Jesus inside of you, when you go to work, you become brave. Because you have God living inside of you. I think I've said enough. And where you are sitting, God is speaking to you. God speaks to you. He speaks to us by his Holy Spirit. 
And I believe God has spoken to you this morning. And let me just say this. When God speaks, He expects a response. You hear me? When God speaks, He ex expects a response. When it's dinner time and we were playing in the, in the playground and mom says, dinner is ready, you respond, isn't it? Because something is happening on the inside, you want food. When God speaks, He expects a response. When God speaks, He expects a response. I believe God has spoken to every one of us. The scripture says, He that are there, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Not only to us down here, but those on the balcony. God has spoken to us. And if God has spoken to you, I would love you to respond accordingly. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Heavenly Father and our God, your word has gone forth. And you tell us in your word that when your word goes forth, it will not return unto you void, but it will accomplish, it will prosper in the very thing whereunto you have sent it. Lord, I have given your people, your precious people, your word. And now, Lord, it's up to them to respond to your call. You're calling them. You're calling them by name. As you said, Moses, Moses. And he heard. You said Samuel, Samuel. And he heard. He, you said Saul, Saul. And he heard. Put your name there instead of Moses. Put your name there instead of Samuel. Put your name there instead of Saul. God is calling for you today. And if you have heard the voice of God and you want to have a relationship with Him, just get up out of your seat right now and come to this altar and you will get to know this God that we are speaking about. Let, let, me, let me tell you, while you are sitting there, you will hear another voice telling you, you don't have to go to the altar. All my friends are going to see me. I am too ashamed to come to the altar. My friend, my brother, my sister, don't be ashamed. You're coming to Jesus who can give you eternal life. Eternal life. Eternal life. So where you are in your seat, I ask you right now, God has spoken and you expect a response. Come to this altar right now. The altar is open. We will wait for you. If you feel a bit timid to come to the altar, ask the person sitting next to you, come with me. I want to go to the altar to receive Jesus as my Lord and Savior. We will wait for you while the worship team will sing a song right now. The altar is open. Jesus is saying, come unto me, all ye that labor, and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, for my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. You may, be, you, you may have been carrying the weight of unforgiveness and bitterness. Come to the altar right now. Jesus and set you free. Jesus' arms are open and ready to set you free. Come, we are waiting. The Lord is waiting. Come to the altar right now. Jesus. Overwhelmed by the weight of your sin. Jesus. Jesus is calling. Come to the altar, you're deciding your future. Give Jesus a chance in your life. He holds your future. Hallelujah. Come right now, come right now. We will wait for you. Just come right now. Hallelujah. 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 
come right now while the door of grace is still open. There will come a time when that door is shut. As in the days of Noah, come today. when the rains came and they keep knocking on the door, Noah opened the door. It was too late because God had shut the door. Today is the day of salvation. Why not come and give Jesus your all? You don't have to carry that burden of sin anymore. Come and lay down at the altar of the cross. Come to the altar and lay that burden down. Lay that burden down. Lay that burden down. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come and lay that burden down right now. Right now. Right now. Hallelujah. You, you may be carrying a sickness. You've been to the doctors and you've tried so many things. And you can't seem to shake that sickness off. Come to the altar right now and we'll pray with you. And God will deliver you from that sickness. From that spirit of infirmity. God is still a miracle worker. He can heal your body. He can heal your mind. He can heal your soul. He can heal your spirit. So the altar is open right now. Come. And let us pray with you. Prove the miracle worker is the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Oh, glory. Oh, glory. Oh, glory. Oh, glory. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, any more with sickness and disease in your body, the doctors have given you over, but Jesus has the final say, come to the altar now and let us pray with you, don't go back with that spirit of infirmity, don't go back, don't let the devil lie to you, there is no cure. There is healing in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 That brokenness in you, that broken relationship, God wants to heal it right now. Take a step of faith. Come to the altar and let God heal that brokenness. That spirit of oppression. That spirit of depression. You're trying to shake it off, but you haven't got the power to shake it off. But I tell you, Jesus can help you today. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Jesus, can we all stand in the presence of God? Do you believe you're in the presence of God? Do you believe, believe God can heal you? Do you believe God can deliver you? Do you believe God can wash all your sins away? Let us pray right now. Heavenly Father and our God, here we stand in your holy, divine presence. Every face in here, Father, you know. Every heart in this place, you know. You know everything about us. You can tell us about ourselves, things we do not even know that you know about us. And today, Father, in this great congregation, we ask that your grace, your mercy, your salvation would reach the hearts of your people before it is too late. Reach out those nail-scarred hands those hands that were nailed to that cross touch them right now 
Deliver them from their spirit of infirmity. Deliver them from every disease, every sickness that is eating down their bodies. Deliver them right now. Some may have heart condition, eye condition, kidney condition. Whatever the condition, Lord, you can heal it right now. Blow your breath over this congregation. From the youngest to the oldest.